Hey, Liam Ward here at LearnTheHarmonica.com. I recently saw a great video called Music Theory in 16 Minutes by Guy Micklemore. It's well worth checking out, but that video was based around the piano as music theory tends to be. Now, if you're like me, I'm afraid of going near a piano. I'm a harmonica player. That's my safe place. So I wanted to create a video with the same fundamentals of music, but based around the harmonica. So I'll be using a C diatonic harmonica for a few examples in this video. You don't need to play, but that's the harmonica I'm using if you want to play along. Let's start right at the very beginning with notes. So what is a note? Well, like any sound, it's a vibration. But the key thing about a note and what makes us perceive it as a note is that it has a constant frequency to that vibration. So the waves, the vibrations that are coming through are a constant kind of speed and, and height. Now, when we hear a note, we also hear its pitch. So we hear things as higher and we hear them as lower. If the frequency of a note is higher, if it's faster, we've got more kind of waves coming at a quicker rate, we, hit, we hear that note as higher. If it's a slower frequency, then we hear that note as lower. So we tend to be able to hear that naturally. We don't think about the frequency of the note, but we hear them as higher and lower. But there's something cool going on that goes even beyond that. And again, it's something we do instinctively without having to think about it. So. If you take any note and you double its frequency, something amazing happens. It sounds the same, but it sounds different. So let me give you an example. If I play one blow on my harmonica, and then I play four blow, and then I play seven blow, and then I play ten blow, Each time I've gone up there, I've doubled the frequency of the vibrations. And it means that something that lock the, locks those notes together. In music, we'd say that they're the same note or we'd label them in the same way. And we'd call the distance between those two notes an octave. And most of our music in, in Western music is based around that distance of an octave. So if you play them together, as we can on a harmonica, they give a full and rich sound. It doesn't sound kind of at odds with each other. It sounds nice and it kind of works. So that's an interval of an octave. And we can split that up into smaller chunks. In Western music, we tend to think of things as split up into 12 notes. That's the Western way. It's amazing to think that all or almost all of popular music in the West in the last 100 years, even more, is based around just 12 notes. So we can split that distance from C to C into smaller steps. So smaller than that doubling frequency and we can create 12 different notes and then build things out of those. There's geeky maths that goes into the individual smaller steps, but I don't want to kind of waffle on about that. I want to get into more of the musical stuff. So these notes are named for E's, and I've already mentioned the C note. Basically, we've named them after letters of the alphabet. So you've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And as you move up, you're going to move on to the next letter. So if I play a C, the next letter up or the next note up is going to be a D. And I can keep going up C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, you might be thinking, well, that wasn't 12 notes. You've said there's 12. And that was only A, B, C, D, E, F, G, well, seven. And then if you go back to the start, eight. You're right. There are some missing notes. And if you think about a C harmonica, it's built around the C scale. 
The C major scale doesn't contain all of those 12 notes. There are what are called sharps and flats. So if I use a piano analogy for a second, although I don't want to go down that way, all of the white keys on a piano are natural notes, no sharps on flats, and then there are black keys between them that fill in the gaps. Now on the harmonica we can fill in some of those gaps with techniques like bending and overblows. So instead of just playing the natural notes, we can fill in some of those. Helps if you set up your harmonica to do it, and I haven't done anything with this, so that F note was absolutely terrible. But it's possible to fill those notes in. Now sharp means higher, and flat means lower. So if you take a note and move it down, then you're flattening it. If you take it and move it up, you're sharpening it. So if I go from C upwards, then I get C sharp. If I go from D downwards, I get D flat. Okay, so you might have noticed that that kind of missing note I was getting sounded the same. So C sharp sounded the same as D flat, and you're absolutely right. There are notes that you can approach one way or approach another. So if you're moving up from C, you can call it C sharp. If you're moving down from D, you can call it D flat. It depends on context. It depends on keys. I don't want to get into the fancy stuff at the moment, but just be aware that they can be called different things depending on how you reach them. There's a great analogy in the Guy Micklemore video of giving directions to someone, and it kind of makes more sense in that context. So you might say, uh, okay, to get to the church, head down High Street and turn right. Or you might say to get to the church, head down North Street and turn left. You're still getting to the same place, you're just getting there a different way. It's the ex exact same idea by calling something either a sharp or a flat, depending on context. Okay, so we've seen what an octave is, we've split that into smaller steps, and we've talked about sharps and flats. So how do we move between notes in this split up octave of 12 different notes? Well, the smallest distance is a half step or a semitone. They mean the same thing. Uh, and then if we double that distance, you'd call it a whole step or a whole tone or just a tone. So we're talking about half steps and whole steps. These distances between notes are usually called intervals. That's just the gap between any two notes. That could be any number of half steps or, or full steps. But the smallest step being a half step. So the step between a C and a C sharp is a half step. Step between a C and a D is a whole step. Okay, now notes any of those notes we've just talked about are used to build melodies. That bit's pretty basic enough. If you sing a melody, if you play a melody, it's built out of those notes. But notes can also build scales or keys. Okay, so a scale is basically taking a key and playing through the notes that form that key in order. So we can kind of use scale and key uh, interchangeably in, in this kind of loose talking about them. And each note or degree of a scale or a key is, is often numbered. So if you take a scale, if we take the most basic scale, the C major scale, We can count and number the degrees of that scale. So the first note is going to be our one, and then we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, or, or the octave. So we can kind of split them up like that. If you were going to add 
a sharp or a flat, you can, you can call that a flattened or a sharp version of one of those numbers. So if you were going to flatten the third degree of the scale, you could call that a flattened third. The, the, the major scale is the most basic building block of Western music, so it's worth us looking at that and then branching out from there. And we can think about a scale in terms of the half steps and whole steps that we talked about earlier. So a scale is just a pattern of intervals. So if we take the C major scale, if we think about the distances between the notes as we move up that scale, we can analyse it as a whole step, whole step, half step, and then whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. If we were talking about in terms of tone, semitones, it would be tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. That's the kind of map if you like, for a C major scale. So if you apply that pattern starting on any note, you will be building a major scale based on that starting note. So if you start on C and apply that pattern, you get C major. But if you start on F, you get F major. And if you start on D, you get D major. Now, major scales are just one type of scale. We've got other scales. So let's look at the minor scale, specifically the natural minor scale. And we're going to start with A minor. So I'll play it for you on a harmonica, just so you can hear how it sounds. So that's our A natural minor scale. So what's our pattern, if you like, the template to produce that minor scale? Well, we're going whole tone half tone, whole tone, whole tone, and then half tone, whole tone, whole tone. And that gives the natural minor sound. Now you might have noticed something interesting. Even though we've talked about these sharps and flats earlier, I didn't have to use any of those sharps and flats, any strange notes, to produce that A minor scale. And that's for a very good reason. The A minor scale is the relative minor of C major. So it contains all the same notes. It's just that by using them in a different way, different function and different order, they sound different. So that minor scale sounds kind of dark instead of sounding bright. So. Whereas if you use the same arrangement of notes, or the same notes in a different order, sounds brighter, sounds happier. Every major key has a relative minor key that contains the same notes, but because you're starting on a different note, it sounds darker, it sounds like a minor key, because by starting on that different note, you're changing that arrangement of intervals so it becomes a different scale. So notes can build melodies and then we can build keys or scales out of those. Once we've got a scale, we can build a chord. So how do we build a chord? Well, the most basic chords are built out of basic intervals. So if we take the C major scale and we take the first, third, and fifth notes of those scale, we get a C major chord. C, E, and G, a bright sort of sound. So if we take the first, third, and fifth note of the D minor scale, we get a D minor chord. We've got D, F, and A, so it's got that darker sort of sound. Now once you've got chords, you can start to build songs, and if you add your melodies on top of those, based around the scales that fit the chord, then you've begun to create music. 
So they're the basic building blocks of music. There is a really cool way of further understanding this in diagram form by using the circle of fifths. Now that's beyond this video, but I'm going to do another video on the circle of fifths and once I've done it, I'll put it in the description below the video so that hopefully you'll start to understand that and I'll also try and relate it to harmonica playing and how that's going to help. Now, if you are a harmonica player and you'd like to know really a well-rounded basis of everything that a harmonica player should know about music theory, then I've put together a course especially for you. There's a link beneath the video to find out more about that premium course. I only know what I need to know to get by. You don't need to know that much, but there is stuff that's really, really useful. So do check out that link if you want to know more. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click like, share the video and subscribe to my channel because I put free videos up every single week. If you like and if you subscribe, then it really helps my channel to grow, helps me to keep making videos. So please do that if you've enjoyed the video. I've put together a free guide that helps summarize everything that I've talked about in this video. If you'd like to get hold of that, that's in the description below the video. I hope you found this video useful. Good luck with your music theory and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.